Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to Call the Cops. Uh, let me just say up the top, Tiger Stockbridge was supposed to be one of our guests tonight, but he wimped out because of some sort of gallbladder situation. But in all seriousness, Tiger, who is at the Beth Israel tonight, had a little situation with his gallbladder. So Tiger, if you're watching, your brother made it. So, I, you know, no excuse for you. Couple of quick announcements. Kids, great news. Tomorrow, which is January 27th, a Thursday, no school in Boston. So, Boston Public Schools, no school. Wanted to tell you that. Secondly, in addition to no school, the snow emergency, yeah, has been declared as of 7 o'clock tonight. So, my watch says 8, so that was an hour ago. So, what is the snow emergency? Basically, if you have a car parked in a major roadway like... I guess Washington Street, to make a plane, yeah. Broadway, Salty. And like the best street in the world, Dorchester Ave. Dorchester Ave, all these good schools, uh, all the streets. Mm -hmm. If you're parked on a busy street, get your car off that street. Snow plows, of course. Uh, I mean, you can't tell now, but snow, what we're told, is on the way. Uh, we need those streets cleared so snow plows can do their job, and then, God forbid, of uh, emergency personnel, be it a fire truck, ambulance, police, what have you, need to use those roadways, those roadways are clear. That's the whole point of the uh, snow emergency. So no school and a snow emergency. The, the, the big news off the top of the show. Speaking of snow, David, we've got pictures of snow. How about that? A fire hydrant. Yeah, since we're showing it to you, if you do have a fire hydrant in front of your house, please make every effort to clear it off. But Mike Mackin, Chief Mackin, is in the house. And we're, yeah, we're talking about snow, because God knows there's been plenty of it. And here's the question. Uh, to shovel or not to shovel? That's the question. Let me tell you right now, Chief Mackin has the answer. And if you're smart, you're going to get rid of the snow. And we're going to tell you how quickly you have to do it and where you can put it and all that good stuff. Again, Mike Mackin, code enforcement in the house. No tiger for whatever the reasons. But my goodness, enough with the snow. Plenty of it. And again, Chief Michael Mackin, code enforcement is here. Going to tell you about, you know, yeah, do you have to remove the snow? Yes, you do. And uh, tell you where to put it. All right, last week, Willie Gross, Deputy Gross, was in the house. And we talked about the second annual Shop with the Cop. It's, it's one of the coolest programs uh, the police department has. 100 kids, 100 cops hooked up, got together at the Target store in Dorchester. Each kid got a $50 gift card from Target, and, and they went shopping, Christmas shopping, with a police officer. And again, if you watched the show last week, uh, Deputy Superintendent Willie Gross was in the house. He told us all about it. And uh, again, yet another example of some of the great work that police officers are doing uh, in the community, and a lot of great kids, too, uh, like this cute kid, you know, being able to take advantage of the situation. All right, Blue Angels, Christmas Day, this was the cover of the Boston Herald. We get Debbie Blandon on the cover of the Herald along with her partner, Mrs. Was it Cynthia? I think it was Cindy. Uh, on the cover of the Boston Herald for doing some really nice stuff on Christmas Day. A, a few days before Christmas, they responded to a radio call. I'm sorry, it was Carolyn. Carolyn Kennedy and Deb Blandon. They responded to a, a radio call for a domestic situation, showed up, handled the incident, but afterwards, they realized the family that they, they answered the call for were in need of some Christmas cheer. They went back, bought a tree, some presents, and they made a big difference. So congratulations to those guys. This is the cover of PR Week. That is Elaine Driscoll. She is the Director of Communications for the Boston Police Department. She does a great job for the department. And let me tell you, that's why she's on the cover of PR Week. They don't just put anybody on the cover of PR Week. So if you get a chance, this is the December edition of the magazine they call PR Week. Elaine Driscoll, West Roxbury's own. We call her the force of change because that's what it said on the cover of the magazine. But if you get a chance, it's a great read. She's done some great work for the police department and the department's ability to, to, to communicate effectively. All right, the USTA, which is the United States Tennis Association, they have a new, or they recently named their uh, Eastern Mass Vo Tennis Volunteer of the Year, and that's him, Officer Frank Williams. And uh, again, if you watch the show, folks, we've had Frank on a number of times, and he's doing some great work uh, with tennis, tennis and kids, bringing, bringing kids and tennis together and uh, teaching the kids some, some life lessons uh, through the sport of tennis. He was recently named the uh, Eastern Mass Tennis Volunteer of the Year. So Frank, Francis, congratulations. That's great Our news. Our objective is to have um, 
you know, not necessarily to raise pros, but to make good human beings. I mean, these kids aren't bad. It's just they see so much. And because they see so much, they react to it. Now we give them tennis, they can react to tennis. Everything is contained, and they can have a great time. All right, this is uh, Superintendent Rafael Ruiz. Uh, recently addressing or talking to uh, a class of uh, a class of the Citizens Police Academy, Citizens Police Academy, recently graduated a, a group or a class of 24 citizens from Mattapan. So congratulations to them. And if you're interested in the Boston Police Citizens Police Academy, uh, it's a four-week program, and it's about bringing the people, the public, and police together and fostering some understanding about how we work and what members of the public would like to see us do and through that understanding hopefully comes increased cooperation so great program uh, got a plug I love the plug the cops for kids uh, cops for kids with cancer organization it's a nonprofit group former or retired police officers who now spend their time what, what, do, they, what do they do they raise they spend their time raising money for the fight against cancer great work there Former Chief uh, Robert Faraday is in charge of the whole program. For more information, go to their website, copsforkidswithcancer.org, to make a donation or to learn more about uh, what they do. They do great work. Cops for Kids with Cancer is an organization of uh, retired police officers, active police officers, friends of law enforcement. And the main thing is that everyone's a volunteer and no one gets a salary. And what we do is uh, we raise money in different ways to take care of families that have a child with uh, cancer and uh, having some financial difficulties and we help them along the bump along the way. Willem is 14 months. He uh, was diagnosed on tax day of all days mm -hmm. and um, so he was diagnosed with uh, ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, okay. but he's doing very well. That's great stuff. Cops for Kids with Cancer doing some great work. It's great stuff. Yeah, you could probably fill a, a couple of days with all the great stuff that the Boston Police do out the community. I, I myself get to, um, over the last decade, participate with Dennis Roy and Michael Kearney over there at the, um, over at the C11 uh, um, CSO. Yeah. They get something coming up right now. What's when we usually? Uh, I get to play Santa for some reason. They choose. I don't me. understand that. I don't, I don't know if it's because the price is free, but I think okay. it's the shape too. The and glasses I, maybe. And I have the suit. And yeah, you get, well, yeah, having the suit makes yeah. a difference. And we do uh, that every year, you know? If you don't know who tonight's guest is, let me introduce him real quickly, formally. Chief Mike Mackin, code enforcement, in the house. And, buddy, what do, you, what do you think? Dave, feel free to roll video of, of what everybody knows is going on outside today. More snow in the, in the forecast. No school in the Boston Public School System tomorrow, which is Thursday, the 27th. And a snow emergency has been declared. Brother, snow has uh, has special meaning to you guys in code enforcement. Snow, snow has been a little challenging so far this year. Mm -hmm. um, we've been lucky that first one rained afterwards and melted that away mm -hmm. and gave us a fresh start. People don't realize when you when you plan for the winter snow removal, you really start in the fall when you get yeah. rid of all your leaves off the street. That's why um, Public Works and the mayor has the um, the recycling program to collect the leaves and they'll send the sweepers by to get as much of that debris off the street as keep possible. The, keep the catch basins open. You keep the catch the sores, basins open. If you will. Make the shoveling a lot easier. It's hard to run that snow blower or shovel yep. through the leaves underneath the snow and, and that's where you really start to prepare for the storm and then as each storm hits the way you shovel the first time may be yeah. the way you're going to shovel the rest of the season. Well, buddy, the that's a great bit yeah. of advice. If you don't shovel, yeah. shovel well yeah. that first time then especially now you, yeah. you're done because you're done. now you're trying to shovel ice and all this other stuff on top of the new snow and it can get tough. You're gonna have another six or eight weeks of um, probably getting violations and, and not being able to get that snow up the street well, or, or a very difficult day of, of getting that into, into compliance. Well, let's speak about what you guys do because obviously everybody has a neighbor who feels like they don't have to shovel. There's always some house or what have you where the, the, the effort is lacking. Um, in that particular case, what role does code enforcement play? Well, code enforcement, we have 16 officers that cover the whole city of Boston. And we, work, a lot. 16 and and we work four, four shifts. We work Sunday to um, Friday. Okay. So we're off Saturdays. And we have a shift that works on midnight to 8 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's a challenging, to, you know, Dodgechester alone has 700 streets. So that means to me Woo. there's at least 1,400 sidewalks that have to be cleared. Yep. You know, and, um, and each have an individual address to them. And it, and it, it can be challenging. So when, it, when you see a neighbor and not um, being a good neighbor and, you can't get down the street, maybe get down to the drugstore, or 
get the baby carriage around. Mm -hmm. Even the poor mailman has yeah, to you know, yeah. be able to, to get well, up and I around. Well, I think the mailman could tell, the male person could tell some stories about people who do and don't shuffle. Every time you talk to these stories, the mailmen's get no love from the uh, major right. networks. They cut them when you tell them. And the mailman needs to be able to get up and down the right, these right. streets, too. And they, I, I bowl out a few, and they're like, you never talk about us. That's <laughs> what we, we talk about you. You guys aren't sexy enough to, to make it to the news. That's you know? right. You I know? mean, you got to be a member of like the fortune yeah, to do that yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, it, it, so let's let's take the guesswork out of this. The, the question to shovel or not to shovel, it's not a question. What's what, what's the answer to that? It's a law. You're required three hours after the storm yep. to shovel 42-inch path, and uh, that was recently changed in 2006 by the city council because before it was an attempt, and people would shovel a small path, yeah. and like the baby carriages and the wheelchairs couldn't get around Boston. Yep. And Boston is. I mean, known. here's an example of a yeah. pretty well shoveled yeah. path there. But why 42 inches? I think that was um, the, to comply with ADA. Okay. You know, so yeah. pe you know, uh, people with wheelchairs yeah. who need to utilize the, the city's sidewalks. I mean, people should think like that. And you some people think don't like think that. that way. You know, even as, um, even some days you find yourself a little struggling. That little mound you're stepping over yeah. to get out to the curb it is difficult and it gets a little tricky with your footing. And, you know, so you, you make an effort to uh, be a good neighbor because. Mm -hmm. The law doesn't require all the all the necessary um, ingredients to to make it a safe, passable city. You can shovel a 42-inch path, but never shovel uh, anything out to the curb so right. you, you can access that path from the curb. And usually, a handicapped pedestrian ramp is the best place I find to clear because it's it, it's it's defined, it's wide enough, mm -hmm. and it makes it accessible. I shovel out my fire hydrant, even though if you yeah. don't shovel out the you know, the fire department rides around and shovels them all out yeah. when they get buried, and you know, you say, help them out. But that, that, well, that's it. It's, yeah. it's just about being, you said, good neighbor. Being a good the, neighbor. Shoveling out the fire hydrant, it, it's, it's what you should do. It's what you should do. You shovel out your, your cat, catch basin. Eventually, we're going to have some rain, yeah. some melting, and, and if you don't shovel that out, the street floods, it freezes, and you get another headache. Well, that's, I mean, that happened. I, I saw that happening on my street a couple of weeks ago where um, I, I got to find my catch basin, but my neighbor mm -hmm. shoveled out hers. Yeah. And as I saw the puddle starting to grow in front of my driveway, I'm like, oh, maybe that sewer or catch basin is an important thing to, to pay attention to. And, and people should note where that stuff is before the snow falls. And, and the, one of the two remaining tips that we like to give out there, if you have an elderly neighbor or yeah. just someone who needs a hand, yeah. go check on them, help them out, shovel their walkway, you know, check on them, see if they need anything at the store. Sure. And you know when the snow is heavy, it's a little wet tonight. It'll probably be heavy uh, in the morning after the after the snow continues uh, finish falling. Take your time. Don't okay. rush it. You know if we see you start your, your sidewalk, we're not going to tell you yeah. you didn't get done in a certain amount of time. We know you started, but we get plenty of time to come back and check again to make sure. Well, let me ask you. That. I mean, because you see this all every winter, yeah. uh, on a whole yeah. or on average. Do the people of the city of Boston do a good job and understand that, you know what, when the snow hits the ground, you have, you ha you have an obligation, it's the law, like you said, to remove it. Do people, for the most part, get that? It is done pretty well. You know, a lot of people understand, they've lived here quite a while, they yeah. understand the need to um, shovel that path. You find sometimes um, businesses a little slow because they have the parking yeah. capacity. So they get that, that parking lot cleared so everybody right. can pull in and do business with yep. them. Again, that they have pedestrians that walk by sometimes use the business just to get to the, to the bus stop or the next place, yeah. and they'll tend to be a little slow about getting to their sidewalk. I don't like seeing the business is slow. There's no excuse yeah. for business. No, they no, know full no, well. No, you get the heavy foot traffic yeah. and people up and down the street. And if yeah. I mean, just from a hello, bit, forget about good neighbor, just a smart business practice. If you don't know enough to keep a clean stoop, then good luck it, to you. 